to our next guest, Labor MP, of course, from the Sunshine State, Graham Perrett. Thanks very much for your time. So what lessons are you hoping the party Great takes time. in particular from the poor performance in Queensland, particularly measured up against an expected swing towards Labor? Well, I, I would hope that the new leader, uh, whoever that is, would spend some time in Queensland on a listening tour uh, to make sure that we do hear the concerns of regional Queensland, South East Queensland, find out what the concerns were. The, you know, there were a lot of MPs, uh, two MPs lost their seats. Um, uh, some candidates that we thought would do well uh, didn't, didn't do as well as expected. So first thing to do would be to listen to Queenslanders, uh, make sure we understand what their concerns were. And obviously, like, like after any election where you haven't, haven't won, is have a look at all of our policies to make sure that uh, we get them calibrated right. You're in a situation now where you have an interim leader. Perhaps you're a bit more free to speak your mind, for example, on the Adani Carmichael coal mine. Would you put forward a more forthright support than we had from the, perhaps you'd call it equivocation, before the election from a lot of federal MPs? Um, the, look, the Carmichael project's a long way from the, the federal seat of Morton, but there are... Uh, mining industries, mm. mining personnel involved in it. And Queensland is, is a, a mining state, so we, we do have to, to get that right. Um, but I think that it would be better served if we listened to the people in those areas uh, and uh, what, what they, what they, how they think they would be impacted on by the mine going ahead uh, uh, or not and listen to their concerns. Mm. So I think that would be the, the good starting point. But we do, we do need to, do you... obviously... Yeah. keep our eyes on the fact that we need to respond to climate change. I, I, people made that very clear to me in my electorate uh, on, the, on um, Saturday. Right. So where do you sit then on... If we do have, for example, Adani approved and the entire Galilee Basin is ultimately mined, would that be a bad outcome for the world? Well, we, we know that e emissions are... are Dangerous climate change is occurring. The scientists tell us that uh, we need to take the appropriate response and whether um, Bill Shorten is in the lodge or um, Scott Morrison's in the lodge, the facts remain the same, that we need to uh, structure our economy appropriately. Uh, now, I, I, don't, I don't think any coal in any spot is inherently evil, but... We need to respond to the, to the facts as presented by scientists, as recognised by the insurance industry, as recognised by anyone that, uh, with a basic understanding of science. So we need to transition our economy in the long run. Uh, it's just how we do that and how we take the Australian people, particularly the Queenslanders, with us is obviously a problem for the new leader. So the open question now, though, is how Labor positions itself with this question. As you say, yes, genuine concerns about climate change and whether or not all of the Galilee Basin would be mined, whether that would be a good thing, balancing up against whether that would be a great thing for the Queensland economy. Where do you sit on that equation? Well, look, I, I do have my concerns about um, uh, either Mr Palmer's project or the Adani project for a number of reasons. One, I worry that the uh, spot price of seaborne coal is heading south, OK? We've got major trade wars taking place, uh, perhaps escalating, and that will have implications for, for, the, for those jobs anyway. I'm worried about uh, Mr Palmer, uh, now that he's, you know, seems to have um, secured some preferences for Mr Morrison, somehow going ahead with a project where... Perhaps he'll be undercutting the jobs of the coal mines down the, ra down the road. Uh, perhaps with uh, uh, under, under, undercutting the price of coal being, uh, coming out of the Hunter Valley. So we need long-term employment prospects for all of Australia, uh, not just uh, the, the people in the Queensland coal-connected uh, uh, electorates. And that's what a, a sensible government would be focused on. So I, th I think so, uh, so people think are Labor can, too fixated on one Labor particular should, block should, of coal in one spot. spot. OK. So, so you think Labor should hold the line on climate change, for example, including the emissions target, and perhaps it was the tax policies that cost you, not climate, and you could keep 45% as a target? Well, w let's listen to what the Australian people um, say when, we, when the, the new leader goes on a, a tour of Queensland and the rest of Australia. But we've just had the but, election, to be fair, Graham well, Perrett, so that's what we're trying to get the message out of. Do you think you should hold the line on climate change with that target? 
Well, I, look, I had, I had swings to me in parts of my electorate where people were obviously concerned about climate change. I had swings away from me where people were, perhaps were concerned about what might uh, happen to their wallets or their retirement. So I don't want to uh, analyse the entire, you know, 14 million odd uh, voters in Australia uh, two days out from, mm. two or three days out from the election. Let's actually look at the results, get some uh, analysts, some cephologists, uh, some focus groups, talk to the, the punters out there who actually made these decisions, find out what their concerns were. But it doesn't, none of that will change the scientific facts that face us, mm. and we know... Economic analysis tells us it costs more to respond in the future than it does now. So we're just making problems for our grandchildren or our great-grandchildren if we don't respond appropriately to dangerous climate change now. You know, the emergency okay. is getting closer is and your... closer. Uh, uh, vote, voting on where the deck chairs are doesn't change the fact that, the, that we hit, are about to hit the iceberg. And if that's your view, though... Wouldn't that mean that you would want to keep a much more ambitious target compared to the coalition's 26%? They're saying go down to 26. Should Labor consider that? Well, the the world's scientists tell us consistently um, that we that the increase in dangerous climate change is heading north. You know, so uh, mm. the the the. Coalition's own figures, the, the government's own figures, tell us that they're barely able to meet their, their target of 26%. Uh, uh, so I, I don't think they're being realistic. I don't think they should um, shirk from their responsibilities. Melissa Price will have to come out of her bunker eventually and deal with the facts as they are, not as how they hope them to be. All right, I want to get to another couple of issues. Are the income tax cuts, should Labor back the government's plan there? Oh, look, I, I'm all... You know, I would, I would want the Prime Minister to keep his word. That's the first thing we, we should focus on. Uh, remember, before the election, this was definitely locked in, going to happen, nothing to see here, uh, nothing, nothing to be concerned about. So uh, the, the people of Australia surely shouldn't have a, 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 you know, their hopes dashed two days out two days after an election. That's the first thing. And so the onus is on the Prime Minister to deliver what he said he would do. He stared down the barrel of those that cameras Senate, and said, though. this will so, happen. So this was... And, you know, particularly for this low-middle-income tax cut where the, the peak goes to mm. someone, I think, earning $90,000 and up to $120,000, we're not talking about the top end of town here. Should Labor support that aspect? Well, I, I believe so. I believe that, you know, that they're the Australians that... Uh, should be, should be rewarded. Now, should a politician, should the Prime Minister receive a tax cut? I, I don't see that as a priority at all. Uh, you know, we're, we're doing OK on, on our wages and people receiving this sort of money. Surely the focus is on getting the economy uh, back into shape. Uh, the, the focus should be on getting the... actually delivering a surplus rather than uh, dealing with the... Uh, just that, the people who are doing OK in the economy at the okay. moment in a very tough and economy, as the about... Reserve Bank Governor has okay. made it clear. He has, he has, and there are some challenges for the government, which you've been going through. I just wanted to get you, lastly, on the leadership issue. Your reporter is backing Anthony Albanese for the leader. Is that accurate, and why would he be best? Uh, look, I, I voted for Albo six years ago. Um, uh, that's not to take away from the, the great work that Bill Shorten did over the last six years. Uh, we, we're... At, you know, the strength in Labor comes in unity. So we'll have a respectful mm. democratic process. Chris Bowen has incredible talent. Uh, Anthony Albanese has incredible talent. Whoever comes forward, we've, we've got plenty of talent in the Labor Party. I, I just think that Anthony Albanese is able to retail politics into the, the pub in Emerald, uh, into the, the boardroom in the middle of Brisbane. Uh, he's got that knack of being able to talk to everyday Australians. I just think that's what we need. Uh, someone who's prepared to listen to the, the coal okay. miners uh, in Blackwater, but also understand uh, the regions, the bush and the city, and he does. He's been the mm. infrastructure minister, delivering for cities, but also delivering roads for uh, regional Queensland. Okay. And Probably spent more time in regional finally, Queensland than anyone else in the caucus. Yeah. Just finally, uh, Jim Chalmers as deputy would help Queensland, you're quoted as saying. Is there any issue with having a leader and a deputy both men in the modern Labor Party? 
Uh, look, um, I'm, I'm sure Penny Wong will have something to say uh, at a, a later on today, but we've got plenty of women with talent in the, in the Labor Party and I'm sure that the, the, um, that will play out. Uh, it's just... Uh, but is it, is it OK to have them in those we, positions? That, is that... There's plenty of women in the, in the Australian Labor Party and if, we'll see what the caucus decides in terms of the deputy leader. Uh, I'm all, always in favour of a Queenslander in, in any spot. Um, that, that, uh, that's just my bias, obviously, being a Queenslander. But um, the caucus will actually make that decision rather than the rank-and-file members. Uh, they'll be involved in, the, in a respectful democratic process in terms of electing the new leader. Graham Parrott, always difficult to front up uh, post something like this that you weren't expecting as well. Appreciate your time. Cheers, Tom.